Good evening, everyone. I hope you can all hear me and thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Jen Santos, the Deputy Director of Parks for the City of Santa Rosa. We are going to go ahead and get started while we get our interpreter set up in just a minute. Uh, we do have one on the line. So um, as you may have uh, surmised, we do have interpreted services this night for our discussion about Fremont Park in Santa Rosa. We're excited to have you with us to reimagine the park. Our interpretive services, um, with the interpretive services, we'll meet about um, a half an hour break to an hour break every, uh, we'll be taking breaks at every half an hour to an hour in the meeting to allow our interpreters a small five minute break. Uh, so we'll keep you posted as those roll forward, but uh, we wanted to make you aware of that. And I'm gonna turn it over to our host, to explain how to um, how Spanish translation services are being provided. A live interpretation can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon in Zoom toolbar. It looks like a globe. Next slide, please. Can we go to the next slide? Bueno, se puede escuchar interpretación en vivo en el canal de español. Puede unirse al canal de español haciendo clic en el icono de interpretación en la barra de herramientas de Zoom que ahora aparece un globo terráqueo. At the time of public comment, the interpreter on the panel will be prepared to assist anyone needing interpretation. It's recommended that you shut off the main audio so you can clearly hear the Spanish interpretation. Additional instruction will be given at that time. Jen, back to you for additional housekeeping for today's meeting. Bueno, en el momento de comentario público, el intérprete del panel estará preparado para ayudar a cualquier persona que necesite interpretación. Se recomienda que apague el audio principal para que pueda escuchar claramente la interpretación en español. En ese momento se le dará instrucción adicional. Jen, de nuevo contigo para asuntos de mantenimiento. Thank you. Okay, so I have a little bit of housekeeping. Um, as members of the public join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's panelists will be viewed during the meeting. If you are calling in from a telephone for privacy, the host will be renaming your viewable phone number to citizen and only the last four digits of your phone number will show. Once our informational presentation concludes, uh, we'll move to item three on the agenda, questions, questions and answers and community input. At that time, we will ask that you raise your hand in Zoom if you have a question, answer, or, or question or comment, and our Zoom host will move uh, one by one down the list of attendees, attendees with their hands raised. Once you have asked your question or shared your input, the Zoom host will lower your hand. If you heard your question asked and then answered, we ask that you lower your hand so we can move through as many questions as possible. Uh, additionally, the city of Santa Rosa is committed to providing a safe and inclusive environment free from disruptions and will not tolerate hateful speech or actions. Everyone is expected to participate respectfully or if necessary, the meeting will end uh, immediately. Next slide, please. So as I mentioned in the beginning, I'm Jen Santos, Deputy Director for Parks, but I also um, have, real, have, special, have special guests with us tonight who you won't be seeing, but you are well represented tonight by your Board of Community Services members attending, uh, including the Chair and Vice Chair of the Board of Community Services. And then tonight's presentation will be provided by our Meyer Landscape Architects and I will turn it over to them for introductions. Hello, my name is Nicole Kelly um, and I am joined tonight by my colleague and friend and the owner of the firm, David Meyer. Um, I will be doing uh, the most of the presentation tonight and I'll um, be taking you through um, the site analysis and, and the polling and all of the, the presentation. Um, next slide, please. Um, we were so excited, um, so thrilled to learn that we had been selected as a landscape architects. Um, and we 
And part of the reason that we just feel like this park has so much potential, but we desperately need your help. Um, so we um, are so grateful for you taking the time to attend this meeting. We're excited that all of you are joining us tonight as we start dreaming about how Fremont Park might better serve your needs in the future. Um, so here we have the agenda. Um, we're going to start by talking about the, the site location and a, a short history of, of Fremont Park. Um, I'm going to talk about the project goals and objectives for this project. Um, we're going to go review uh, the schedule, and then we're going to do a short poll um, with some really easy questions just to get you used to the polling um, function on this Zoom webinar format. Um, next, we're going to go dive into the park um, and talk about site analysis. We're going to talk about what its context and um, what, what's nearby. Um, we'll talk about the beautiful existing trees and some of the original features found in the park. And we'll talk about the cancer memorial features as well. Um, after that, we'll have, uh, we'll review some reference images um, and talk about, and then start dreaming about what the park might become in the future and what your ideas might be. So we'll look at some reference images of other parks and you'll be able to vote on your favorite elements. Um, and then we'll have a question and answer section, um, which Jen just described. And then finally, um, we'll um, give you more information about uh, the survey that's available on the city website, talk about next steps, and give you contact information if you have, um, if you have, would like to request any additional information. Um, next slide. I know many of you already know about um, where this park is and, and what's nearby, but this aerial photograph really shows you how close it is to downtown. Um, it's just a seven minute walk between Courthouse Square and Fremont Park, which is highlighted in the aqua color surrounded by yellow. Um, it's between 4th Street and 5th Street and then Hope um, on, on the... Um, Eastern Boundary. Um, we're, it's really close to the Cherry Street Historic District, which you'll see in blue. And it's right across the street from Santa Rosa Middle School. Um, it is this proximity to all these businesses um, and the residential districts as well. And of course, the Santa Rosa Middle School um, that uh, really mean it has the potential to be activated by all these people who are within walking distance. And that's really an exciting um, thing for us. Next slide. A little bit of history. Um, in 1865, the local school district at the time bought the land from an early settler with the last name of Hallman. The site was occupied by Fremont Grammar School until 1924. Both the park and this grammar school were named after historical figure John C. Fremont, who was a, an explorer and also one of the first California senators, uh, U.S. Senator um, representing California. Um, in 1926, the site was sold to the city of Santa Rosa and the rock, the stone that's at the corner of Hope and Forth that you can see in this photo commemorate that that um, the land, the donation of, uh, sorry, the, the selling of the land to the city and um, honors the frontiers people and the first settlers in the area. Um, the park was designed by landscape architect Howard Gilkey. We have the original blueprints and they're really beautiful. Um, the park, you can see a photo in the lower left. It was designed in what was called the Go Art style. Um, which was very romantic, um, and it was um, it was very fashionable in that time, and was uh, very was seen throughout Europe and the U.S. in in landscape design and in park design. Um, in 2000, Cancer Survivor Plaza was installed, and we'll be talking that a little bit later. the The top photo shows on the top left shows um, a camp. Um, who used the park, I think this was taken in the 1950s or 60s, 
um, just uh, showing a huge community of people who were using the park um, and uh, as, as a place for, for their camp. Um, next slide. So this park has been a rich part of Santa Rosa's history, but it's no longer really serving the community. So together with the city, the project goals and objectives and why we're here today is we'd like to reimagine Fremont Park through community participation. Um, we'd like to work to create a safe, inclusive and welcoming green space. We hope that to enhance the park's beauty and celebrate its historic past. And we hope to improve park amenities, infrastructure, and most of all, user experience. Next slide. Um, so the project schedule, um, we are in the first phase, which is the master plan and community engagement phase. We just got started in November. Um, so we're off to a fast start. Um, we're in community meeting number one, which will be um, site analysis and polling. Um, polling, you'll see, you'll take, you'll um, be able to do twice in this meeting, um, and you'll be asked um, multiple choice questions, but we want to let you know, as, and I'll, I'll um, remind you again in the end, that if you have more comments, it's always, um, uh, you're always um, open, and, and we welcome comments on the city website, which will be shared with you at the end of this meeting. Um, the city sent out over 900 invitations to this meeting. So, um, and we're, I know that um, the principal Diaz, we've been working with the middle school principal Diaz also is helping us with outreach. So we're super excited to talk to as many people as we can. So um, part of this community meeting, we're gonna just record everything you tell us. And then at the next community meeting, which will take place in spring of 2022, um, we will present you three um, draft plans uh, for the park, which uh, will incorporate your favorite ideas from um, this first meeting. Um, so again, you'll, you'll get to see three ideas and you'll get to vote on what your favorite one is. Um, and then finally at community meeting number three, well, after the second meeting, we'll record everything you tell us, all your favorite parts, and then we'll distill that into one plan and we'll present that in late spring of 2022 um, and let you again tell us what you love and what you hate and um, and we'll record all of you, uh, the comments and get to work with the engineers um, in drawing plans um, to get this project built. Um, and according to our schedule, we're aiming for starting construction in summer of 2023. Next slide, please. Okay, so we're just about to start our first um, set of uh, polling questions. Um, and these will be really easy. Um, we'll ask you some really simple questions about your age, et cetera. But one of the questions that we wanna make sure that you, um, you have a clear idea of is, we're gonna ask where in the city do you live? And that's really broken up um, by quadrant. So the Northwest quadrant is represented by number one on the map. It's north of Highway 12 and west of 101. Um, the southwest quadrant is south of 12 and west of Highway 101. Um, northeast is number three, north of Highway 12 and east of 101. And number four, finally, is south of Highway 12 and east of Highway 101. So find out where, you're, where you live within that area so you'll be ready to answer the question that's just gonna to come to you in just a sec. Okay, I'll turn it over to Lisa. Nicole, all of the poll questions are multiple choice. You must answer all the questions in order to submit your responses. The submit button is at the very end of the poll. You may need to scroll to the bottom of your screen to find it. If you are completing the poll on your smartphone, you must first answer the first question before you can answer the second question, et cetera. If you are participating in the meeting via a landline, you will not be able to participate in the poll at this time. However, the poll is posted on the project webpage through May 6th. 
Once everyone has completed the poll and it has been closed, the results will appear immediately and Nicole will walk you through the results. We're ready to begin. And I think we have a correction um, to the date. I don't think it's May 6th, um, but I think Jen or Nicole, you guys can give us the correct date on that. Sorry about that. Yes, thank you. Uh, it, I believe we're at January 6th for that. Um, essentially, we're gonna take it to the first, uh, possibly second week in January. We'll see how many people are participating in that survey online. Uh, so, and you can also participate right now. So please feel free to click in there. You see the pop-up on your screen. Remember to scroll down so you can select all the questions. And so it'll be a little bit silent for a minute while you're filling these questions out. Um, but we can see the results live as soon as you're all done. En la primera votación va a escoger su edad, menos de 15 años, entre 16 y 20 años, entre 21 y 30, 31 y 50, 55 y 75 y, tiene, y si tiene una edad más de 75 años. La segunda pregunta, la segunda votación es acerca de dónde vive en la ciudad, en qué parte de la ciudad vive. Eh, si vive Si, si vive en el cuadrante nor, nor, noroeste, en el cuadrante noro... Uh, María, we um, don't need you to translate those questions. Um, thank you for that. Um, we'll keep you listed as a panelist. Um, and we currently have Pablo in the Spanish translation um, right now. And we will do a break at um, six o'clock uh, to swap the rules. But no need for you to translate those survey questions. Thank you, though. Thank you.
All right, thanks for your patience, everyone. It does look like um, everyone has answered the poll questions. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and end the survey now and uh, show those results. Okay, it looks like 24% um, of you are between the ages of 31 and 50. Um, just over half of you are between the ages of 51 and 75, and a quarter of you are over the age of Oh, excuse me, Nicole, you ended up being muted there. <laughs> Okay. Um, yeah, so moving on to the next, oops, I think I accidentally closed it. Is it possible to reopen it? Hear me, Elisa? No, it's not possible for me to um, populate it on your screen. Oh, um, I can go through it really quickly. You can, okay, great, yeah. sorry about that. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> Thanks for starting us off, Nicole. And so on question number two, where do you live in this city? It looks like 76% are in the Northeast quadrant, which is the quadrant where the park is located. So that's great. We have a lot of folks who live around the area and then we also have some from Northwest and Southeast quadrants. And we asked you, how did you hear about the meeting? It looks like the city's e-newsletter was a popular way to learn about it as well as it looks like word of mouth. That always works well for us. And we have some notifications at the park, social media, banners, city website, et cetera, flyers that were helpful as well. And how often do you visit the city park? Number four, uh, every day, 33% of you visit every day, at least once a week. And once a month was split between 29% and the about 10% of you visit once a year. And then how long does it take for you to get to Fremont Park? Uh, most of you put between zero and 10 minutes at 67% and 10 to 20 minutes to get to the park was about 33% of the respondents. So uh, this was just a, a quick and easy poll. It gives us a lot of really valuable data when we move forward. Uh, but it's also a good starter. We'll have another poll for you, as Nicole mentioned, uh, that gives, we're gonna ask for more responses about what type of amenities you wanna see or what sort of changes you wanna see in the park. So we have a little bit more presentation and then we'll go through another, another poll a little bit later on. So I'm gonna turn it back to Nicole. And sorry you. again, um, actually guys, at this time, I think it's a good time to transition Maria um, into the interpreter role. Um, and again, as a friendly reminder, please just make sure that when you are speaking, um, that you are speaking at a slower pace so they can interpret everything that you're saying. So um, at this time, we'll resume um, at 6.05. All right, great, thanks. We'll take a little bit of break and switch out our interpreters and we'll be right back.
All right, Nicole, um, looks like we're got the interpreters swapped here and Maria is in um, on the Spanish channel. So um, we will go ahead and let you take it back over and I will put it back on um, slide 10 and you can just tell me when to advance the slide. Thank you. Okay. Okay, next slide. Um, now we're gonna dive a little bit deeper, deeper into the park. Um, so this map shows us the elements within the park and just really close by. Number one is Santa Rosa Middle School, just across Fifth Street. Um, number two is Santa Rosa Church. It lines Hope Street um, to the east. Um, Number three is future residents. Um, if you've driven down 4th Street recently, you've probably seen the construction of the multifamily housing that's going in, uh, which we're really excited about. Again, hoping that um, that will draw families into the park. Um, four is surface parking on both 4th Street and, and Hope Street. And then we have parallel parking on, um, on 5th Street. Um, we have existing crosswalks already at the two main corners. Um, we'll talk about some of the planting elements, the key planting elements within the park. Number six at the corner um, is some saucer, flowering saucer magnolias, um, which we'll show photos of uh, shortly. Um, seven, right under that, right under those magnolias, by the way, is where the, the memorials, the rock is um, this commemorating the, the purchase of the land. Um, the seven is the original central paving layout. Um, originally, the park was designed to have brick paving, um, but that eventually became a maintenance issue and has been updated to asphalt throughout the park. But that central yellow um, portion that you see on the map is, is really the, the, main, um, the main focus of the park and where um, most of the elements are. Um, the cancer, such as the Cancer Survivor Arts installation, that's seen in number eight and the red band in the center. Um, that's located um, within these two, the two hedges on either side. Um, nine is indicated by those white dashes and those are positive mental attitude plaques, plaques which we'll share a photo with later. That is also part of the Cancer Survivor Art installation. Number 10 is the formal yew hedge planting. Yew is a type of very dense evergreen hedge. Um, and uh, the, these particular ones were planted back in 1926 um, and they're huge and massive today and a little bit problematic. And we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, number 11 are the original arbors. The trellises uh, were part of the original design. Um, Number, and those are on either side of the water feature, the fountain, which is number 12. Number 13 is a majestic walnut tree that we just love. Um, we actually had an arborist come out and take a look at all the trees a couple weeks ago. And they said, um, because there were no leaves on the tree, they couldn't tell if it was a walnut or a butternut tree, which you might not be familiar with, but is um, more commonly found on the East Coast. But if it is a butternut tree, it'll be the largest in California. So we are. Um, just waiting till spring so we can correctly identify it. And uh, 14 finally is along that Western boundary. We have just some beautiful um, specimen redwood trees. Next slide. Site impressions. And I can't do a, a show of hands right now, but really I'm guessing that many of you know this park as the Cancer Survivor Park um, and not Fremont Park. Um, the most notable um, thing um, element along Fifth Street is the sign that you'll see in the top um, top left, and then in the central part that we just showed when I showed you the map is the Cancer Survivor Art installation that you can see in the top right. On either side of that installation are the U's, the hedges um, that really form a wall um, defining that central space. Um, they define that central space, but they also divide the park. And that's one of the issues that we, we see with them. Um, in the lower left, you'll see how that wall is on the left-hand side of the photo. And then you have the open park to, to the right. But 
the park is divided into three spaces really um, to the left and right of the hedge and then the central and then the central part with the um, uh, the art installation. Um, one of the site impressions that we love is the trees. Um, this lower left, excuse me, lower right photo is just all the trees um, layered on top of each other. There's redwoods and oaks and magnolias and just really numerous trees that really add to the seasonal character of the park. They provide shade and they are just beautiful. So um, that's one of our really uh, favorite parts about this site. Next slide. Here's again, some of the beautiful existing trees um, likely installed back in the 20s. We have some, um, these photos were taken once winter had already started. So they're a little, they're dropping their leaves in fall, but there's some magnolias on the left-hand side and then a beautiful oak tree along that Western boundary between the redwoods. Next slide. Again, the redwoods, um, they really are um, tall and beautiful and just great to be underneath. Um, the, the, you just feel um, so protected underneath there and, and just in awe of the trunks and the size of the trees. So we're excited to, to have those existing in the park. Next slide. Some of the more problematic species in the park, I've already talked about um, the use the hedges in the center, and that's on the right side. It's, it's really the walls that they create um, are creating problems with site visibility and safety. Um, I, someone could be just on the other side of these views, and you could be on the other side and not see them. And, and that's really um, something that we're concerned about and um, you think is an issue. The second, set of trees is the magnolias that are on the corner of Hope and uh, Fourth, and that's um, on the left-hand slide. Um, right now in winter, there's no leaves on those trees and they you can see right through them, but um, come spring and summer when they leaf out, you really, it's hard to see into the park from that corner. Um, and again, that we're, we're concerned about site visibility and, and screening and safety. Next slide. Some of the original elements, um, a closer look at the trellis and arbors that were um, installed on either side of the water feature. Um, they've been painted and the wood has been replaced over the years, but they, um, they too create a bit of an issue with screening and visibility. Um, although um, they are, right now they have this year growing on the top and they're, they're pretty lovely, but um, they do create a problem with um, sight line and visibility. Next slide. And the water feature. The water feature, this photo was taken in summer. Um, I think if you go now, you might find some more, uh, you'll find water in the uh, pond, but typically um, it's not functioning and it's it's really charming and you can see the uh, the the really cool light fixtures throughout the park on the left-hand side. And both of these are charming and, um, but they are really no lot, they're becoming unused and a bit problematic um, for maintenance. Next slide. This is a close-up of the art that was installed as part of the Cancer Survivor Park Plaza. Um, and it's really, it's a metaphor, it's a metaphorical representation of cancer survivors. So the cancer survivors are coming through this, this tunnel of, of the arches that you can see. Um, and it's about like the, the happiness and the, the feeling that you get once you've gone through this difficult period. Um, and um, the plaques that I mentioned earlier can be seen in the right-hand photo. There's several of these tucked into the the you, the shrubs, um, talking about um, positive positivity and remaining um, having a positive attitude um, when you're going through a difficult time. Um, so um, these are really a beautiful um, uh, metaphor and um, a part of the park that's been there again since 2000. But since they are, as we described in the in the center of the park, we just will ask you a question later if perhaps there's might be 
if you might, might be open to relocating them within the park or to another park within the city. Um, that's just something we're considering as we um, think about all the, the ways we might want to reinvent and reimagine this Fremont Park. Um, next slide. So now we're going to talk, um, well, now we're going to start dreaming about what Fremont Park could be. Those were all the elements that it is today. And what we really want to hear from you now is um, what can it be in the future? So um, we're, I'm gonna walk you through the questions that you will be asked shortly. Um, and so that you can have, um, so you can be prepared for answering and kind of get a visual um, to go along with what we're thinking these elements might be. Number one is an easy one. It's what is the primary reason you visit Fremont Park now? Next slide. The second question will be, which features would make Fremont a great park? And you can pick three, I believe. Are you looking for playgrounds? Um, are you looking for open lawns for picnicking? Um, or do you like the idea of community gardens? Are you looking for activating the park with sports fields or sports courts? Um, are you hoping a portion of it can become a dog park? Um, are you looking for seating areas for maybe you can, uh, so you can walk and eat your lunch in the park? Would you be interested in public art or pollinator gardens or walking paths? And lastly, none of the above or other. And really when you say none of the above or other, you won't be able to fill in the blank here, but again, you can um, go to the city website and tell us your ideas there. Um, next slide. Okay, what kind of play features would you like to see? Climbing features, natural play, um, a sand pit, play mounds, or more standard play equipment like swings and slides. And the, lastly, would you like to see game tables uh, like chess or anything like that? Or G, none of the above. You prefer not to have any play features in the park. Next slide. The next question will be about sports features. Um, and you can pick two, I believe. Um, what sports features would you like to see? A skate park, ping pong or chess tables? Pickleball or tennis, basketball, even half court or full court. Half court um, is a little bit smaller and doesn't take up as much space. Um, e is athletic equipment. And F will be no sports features. You prefer there not to be any sports features. Next slide. Okay, and lastly, you'll be asked, how you feel about relocating the cancer memorial, either within the park or to a different park. Um, we're not quite sure. We're just um, listening to everyone and seeing what, um, what, what the um, most people feel. Uh, would you strongly agree that relocating it is a good idea? You agree, you have no preference. You disagree, you don't want it moved. Or you strongly disagree. Or the last is F. You just don't know, you need more information. Um, okay, next slide. So now we'll go ahead and start the polling.
Nicole, it looks like we have a little bit over half um, of the people that have responded. So um, we will let you know as soon as they've completed. Okay, I promise not to close it this time. <laughs> All right, Nicole, it looks like um, we have wrapped up on our end, so we will go ahead and uh, share those survey results and turn it back over to you to discuss those. Okay, so what is the primary reason you visit Fremont Park now? We have 10% of people saying for a drop off or pick up of your student at Santa Rosa Middle School. We have um, 10% saying they um, do come here to walk their dog. We have 38% saying they come to enjoy nature. 10% um, to enjoy the art. 14% says uh, say to come to enjoy the water feature. 30% uh, or just about 30% of you, uh, 29, um, come for your lunch break. 19% um, of you come to socialize. Um, and 33% said none of the above. Question two, which features would make Fremont Park a great place, or what would make Fremont a great park? Um, you got to choose up to three. Um, play elements got 43%. Open lawns got 38%. Community gardens only got 10%. Um, sports fields or sports courts got 24%. Um, a dog park only got 5%. Seating areas scored high. They're, I think, our um, most, yes, that's our highest response with 67%. Um, public art is 33. Um, gardens, pollinator gardens, 52%. Walking paths, 57%. And there were no none of the above. Okay. Question three. What type of play features would you like to see? Climbing features got 29%. Nature play um, got 33%. Sand areas got 10%. Play mounds, 14%. More standard play equipment got 24%. Game tables scored really high with 52%. That was the highest score. Um, none of the above was 19%. Question four, which sports features would you like to see? A skate park got 10%. Ping pong or chess tables got 38. Pickleball or tennis got 19%. No one wants basketball. Well, that would be easy. Um, athletic equipment got 14%, but half of you, almost half of you said you don't want any sports features. So that is um, really, really, um, good to know. Uh, relocating the Cancer Survivor Memorial within the park or to another park in downtown is a good idea. 52% um, strongly agree with relocating it. 29% um, said they'd simply agree. Um, there was no, no one had no preference. Um, we had 5% saying they disagree with moving it another 5% saying strongly disagree, and then 14% um, saying we just, they need more information. 
thank you again for taking um, the poll. That was, we will, um, together with all the answers we receive here and the online survey, we'll take these all into consideration in the coming days ahead um, as we start thinking about uh, the new design for the park. Um, at this point, we're going to open it up to a uh, question and answer period. Um, and again, we are really hoping to hear what you would like to see in the design. Um, some, what are your ideas for making the park a success? Um, what are your ideas? You know, what, what are your, we were just waiting to hear what you, if you've been walking by the, and thinking this park would be so great if it had this, we'd love to hear that. Um, and if you have any additional questions for us, feel free to ask those as well. Um, and I think we'll go ahead and get started by uh, raising your hand if you have uh, a comment or a question. We can just also go to the next slide, please, or q and Yes, next slide. And um, if you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please raise your hand. If you're dialing in by, via telephone, please dial star nine to raise your hand. And I'm gonna ask the host to go over a little bit more details on how to uh, participate in question and answers. We'll turn it back to the host. Thank you, Jen. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and viewers. The first speaker will be acknowledged and invited to speak. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you are invited to do so. Your microphone will be muted at the end of that countdown or at the conclusion of your comment. If you are participating in the meeting from the Spanish channel in Zoom, we have an interpreter on standby in the English channel to assist during your public comment. If you wish to ask a question or provide input, please be sure to pause throughout your comments to allow for interpretation. Those using interpreter support will be afforded additional time for your comments. For Spanish speakers, at the time you hear your name called, turn off the Spanish channel to make your public comment. The icon may now look like a circle with an ES in the middle and the word Spanish underneath. Thank you, Shelly. So I'm gonna um, turn it back to our host to call on our first uh, folks. It looks like we have some hands raised. Turn it back to our hosts. Thank you. Our first speaker, um, the name on it is Home. I'm going to invite you to uh, speak. And you will have three minutes. Hello. Are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Okay. Thank you. I, I just wanted to make uh, a couple of comments. One comment uh, is that uh, I very much like the park open uh, without a lot of features. I feel, and the, and the poll pretty much showed that many people go there to simply enjoy the peace of the park, to eat their lunch, uh, see a little greenery. Um, my other comment concerns uh, the Cancer Survivors uh, Monument. And I know you gave us a choice of either uh, relocating that monument to the park, to that park or to another park in town. Um, I very feel, uh, very much feel that that monument should be relocated to the corporate yard and it should be taken out of the park and not placed in another park. I find it to be a really creepy sculpture and I don't wish to offend anybody. Uh, but I think that that should simply be removed. And that is all I have to say. Thank you very much for your comment. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Cappy. Cappy, you'll be asked to unmute it. You'll be followed by Bonnie. Hi. 
Uh, hi, I'm Cappy, and um, I live in the historic district that is uh, like two blocks away from the park. Um, this park is in a historically uh, designed park by a well, um, you know, renowned landscape architect. I think the actual footprint of the design of the park is excellent. I think that the um, city needs to maintain the park. The, the uh, fountain obviously needs maintaining and probably could run when we're not having a drought. Um, I, I don't understand the conundrum with the yew hedges as I, I've had, I have a yew hedge and you can take them down or I had, I no longer have a yew hedge and you can take it down, I sold my house. Um, you can take it down and make it almost any size you want there. They will grow back and um, they just need to be maintained. I do think we need sight lines through the park. I think that's important so that we don't get homeless there. And I like the fact that people from the downtown and from the surrounding neighborhoods can walk to the park, sit and have lunch and be in a quiet, calm, green space in the middle of town. Thank you. Um, I just wanna take a quick moment. Do we need to switch interpreters, um, Elisa? Is that is this a good time to do that? Yes, um, we will go ahead and take a five minute recess um, to get those interpreters locked out and resume at, let's say, 637.
All right, Nicole, it looks like um, we have swapped the roles here and we are going to go ahead and just proceed with uh, public comment and uh, host McClure will start calling on those names again. Hi, Bonnie, we had you next. I'm going to allow you to talk if you don't have anything to say. That's nothing. Um, hi, um, I'm Bonnie. Just really, I just agree with Cappy. And um, I agree with the gentleman who said that the cancer sculpture should be removed. Excuse me, Bonnie, if you could just hold on for a second. There we go. It looks like we needed to get our interpreter muted. Uh, if you want to go ahead and start again. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. That's okay. Um, I do agree with Cappy that some of the design elements should remain, um, but but I love the idea of open, calm space. And I agree with the gentleman who thinks that the cancer um, sculpture should be removed. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Thank you. Uh, our next speaker is going to be last four digits, 1918. Go ahead. Nineteen eighteen. Uh, last four digits. Your phone number. Did you did you wish to speak? Oh, I'm sorry. That's my wife's phone number. This is her computer, so I didn't recognize it. Yes, uh, this is Bill, and I'd just like to say that I consider um, Fremont Park to really be one of the city's prime historic spots because of the beauty of the park, the historic architecture, landscape architecture, the fact that it was designed by Howard Gilkey, who in the twenties was extremely well known. And then the WP helped build the place. And uh, even the cancer survivors aspect of it, in 2000 when that went in, that was heavily supported by people who were survivors of cancer. So I think the historical aspect of the park is critical and should be emphasized. They also think the plantings are critical and should be emphasized and improved. For example, the ewes could be pruned up and narrow. They were done many years ago that way and they'd left to get too big. Magnolias at the corner, could easily be pruned up so you can look under them. So I don't see that as a big issue at all. I think a small playground in that area, particularly as the neighborhood has more um, children into it would be appropriate. I would like to see something probably like at the Southwest corner, carefully fit in, very small, maybe in the order of the uh, playground that's at, uh, at Juilliard Park with some climbing elements and such, but very kind of a low key. And um, okay. That's about all I had to say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you for your comment. Uh, Carol, we're gonna have you talk next followed by Judy. Hi, thank you very much. Um, 
I'm thrilled that you have the original maps. I'm wondering if they could be posted for all of our education and um, enrichment. And because you have the original maps, I'm wondering if you could call out which of the plantings and elements are original. If the park is from the 1920s, that makes it about 100 years old. I don't think those redwood trees are about 100 years old. And because you do this for a living, I bet you could uh, date those redwoods for when they went in. Word has it that redwood trees by nature don't actually belong in the Santa Rosa Plain. Uh, several years ago, a number of them were taken out of the courthouse square. Also, I would love to know which of the older trees are healthy as opposed to um, diseased. So perhaps some of the trees such as the yews, as other people have mentioned, could be pruned and preserved because of their historic nature. I was also wondering if you could talk a little bit about the fountain and its historic nature. Bill mentioned that it was from the um, WPA era. I'm wondering if the basalt that the um, bricks are made of were quarried locally, which would give it additional historic value. And last but not least, I'm wondering if modern playground design has any um, has any types that are rather classical in nature. I know older playgrounds have a tendency to be more dangerous, but I'm wondering if um, the playground element, if that goes in, could blend in with the more historic nature of the park with Juilliard Park and Fremont Park um, being the two downtown, perhaps not classified as historic parks, but definitely historic in nature. And I uh, look forward to some answers. Thank you. Thank you for your questions, Car Carol. Um, so we just had, as I mentioned, we actually just had um, a arborist review all of the trees on site. Um, the redwoods were shown on the original plan, um, as was a, a buckeye that is planted within those um, redwoods. Um, there are several that the, I think um, if you know trees, there's a couple, there's a cedar um, that's existing that was um, part that's a beautiful, beautiful specimen. Um, and then some of the crepe myrtles as well. Um, there was a lot of planting along that um, western boundary that were more like shrubs that, that are no longer there. But um, the redwoods and um, again, the, the cedars and the yews um, and crepe myrtles, um, if, you know, if you know your trees and you can, um, you can go out there and see them. Um, the, there are some trees that are unhealthy um, and some that require um, a little bit of work um, or attention to, to bring them back to life. Some of the redwoods, um, she know, we uh, were told a couple of the redwoods really need um, a little, need irrigation or water as they look um, a bit thirsty, but other than that are, are fairly healthy. Um, the original map, um, I, I'm not sure if we can post it. It's a little hard to read. Um, it was drawn by hand and then blueprinted, but it is a lovely document. And to be honest, the, the footprint of the park that you see today in the asphalt paths, it largely is um, exactly what was um, initially um, installed um, back in 1926. Um, as far as the stone in the quarry, I'm not quite sure. I don't know if we have that kind of information. Um, but um, we can look into that. And then lastly, as far as the, the playgrounds go, you know, um, there are, I, unfortunately, you know, when I think about classical design and, the, and the, the types of playgrounds that I grew up with that would probably be a good fit, they're, made, they're constructed of wood and um, uh, would be uh, more natural, um, you know, and, and pay perhaps more in the line that you're thinking more classical. Um, but there's many, many ways of doing it. Um, and so we um, we will definitely, if, if the historic features are, are really desired to maintain and whatever we install will um, 
will be mindful of that um, in the style and in design and in location and placement. So thank you for your comment. And, and if I could, Nicole, I'd like to add on top of that. I thought sure. that comment about the playground equipment was really insightful because this historic fabric creates kind of a soulful quality for the park that we find interesting. So uh, a good point about not letting uh, playground equipment of a modern look become a too dominant of appearance because it would potentially conflict with the historic nature of the park. So thank you for your comment. And I'll just add on top of that, that we can definitely post the original plan um, online if people are interested in that. It is very hard to read, but we'll post it. Thank you. We'd like to just remind everybody to uh, slow your comments just a bit so the interpreters can keep up. Thank you. Our next speaker will be Judy. Judy, I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead, Judy. Hi, um, I have two comments. Number one, if you drive down 4th Street um, going west, the you go down a, a fairly nondescript business district and those um, magnolias at, on Fremont Park are in full bloom and have been for the last week. And they are gorgeous and they, you, you, they just um, are so gorgeous. They take your breath away. So I don't want to see that little grouping disappear. I know that um, you can prune magnolias um, so that you can have a, an open um, aspect. Number two is I um, have been involved in creating and um, and exploring um, art, um, public art for a long time. The cancer, and I resent that this Cancer Survivors Park installation is referred to as art. Number one, there are 25 installations exactly like it all over the United States and Canada. The Brock family, has some kind of a situation where they will put the installation in place if the citizens or the city um, come up with the money. And unfortunately, at the time that this was being considered to be put in a public park, the Art in Public Places Committee had no artists on it. So I think they made a big mistake by accepting this as art. It is not unique. It is not interesting. Um, something that, it, that is a copy of 24 other replicas uh, uh, is not art. And most of the ones that are in the United States and Canada are situated at hospitals, hospital gardens and cancer centers. And I would suggest that we might be able to repurpose this to one of the local hospitals or a cancer center in the area. Thank you very much. Thank you, well Our next speaker will be Richard, followed by Michael. Go ahead, Richard. Hello. My name is Richard Bell. Um, I'm part of a group of people that are trying to get Patonk courts put in a park in Santa Rosa. And in many ways, this park would be perfect for them. Oh, even if they, they may run afoul of some other ideas for other people. But the main comment I would like to make is that I think this should become more of an urban park in that it should be a park that has lots of different uses in lots of small spaces for as many people as possible. Things like chess and checkers tables, ping pong tables, um, small areas to play, areas 
areas to meet and to eat together, possibly food vendors, um, playground structures for the kids. Because it, as I see it, everybody likes the idea of this park being so classic and old. But I've walked through that park hundreds of times and I don't see people using it much, except for the people were there because they had no place else to live. And if we want to make the park into something that's really got to, going to be used, we need to develop it in such a way that it provides something to do for people of all different ages and activities. Thank you, that's all. Thank you, Richard. Thank you very much for your comments. All right, Michael, go ahead. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you. Yeah, I'd uh, like to dovetail on what Richard said. I really strongly agree with multi-use uh, to have it very inviting for all types of folks. Uh, and I'd like to see it open. Uh, I think that will help in terms of uh, security and safety. Right now, it's very difficult to imagine uh, middle school kids hanging out there. I walk downtown every morning with my dog from between nine to 11, and it's not a place where I go sit down and hang out uh, for a variety of reasons. And in that regard, I'd like to see uh, when you choose plants, use more native plants. We've, <clears throat> we're moving into a different era of climate change and scarcity of water. So I'd like to see more native plants that are drought tolerant. I'd like to see more permeable surfaces, like the asphalt uh, walkways removed. There are plenty of uh, great permeable structures and surfaces now that will allow the water to slow and sink in the ground. So you, you recharge the uh, underground aquifers and that would really help uh, with the, the depth of the roots of the redwood trees. And um, in terms of the water fountain, I, I have mixed feelings about that. I think, you know, you need to, uh, move the water if you're going to have it. So maintenance is an issue. I know about three times a week as I walk downtown, I take a bag and pick up stuff, uh, trash as we're walking along. And I can't tell you the number of times that I've picked food and all sorts of items out of the fountain. And it's just uh, really, I can see in my mind a maintenance issue, although I love flowing water. So I, uh, it's complicated and I have mixed feelings about that. Uh, I think that's all I want to say. And, and I really applaud you for really starting the conversation. Uh, we need more parks in the city, more usable parks, uh, so we could beautify Santa Rosa. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Michael. We now have Caitlin. Caitlin, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. Go ahead. Can you hear us? Caitlin, would you like to speak? Caitlin, I believe you're, you're muted. Kaylin, uh, you accept the unmute? Okay, I think we lost Caitlin. If she comes back on, I'll let you know, but at this time we have no other speakers.
All right, great. Um, if you do want to speak, just let us know. We can always add you in if you have a comment. Um, but let's go ahead and go to our next slide, please. There we go. All right. And so, um, Nicole, did you want to go over these two next meetings for us? Sure. Sure. So, um, thank you again. We heard like really, really thoughtful, wonderful comments. Um, I am so, so appreciative to all of you that came. Um, these are just really, really, really wonderful um, comments that we're going to um, take and we're recording them all, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and we're going to come up with three conceptual master plans. So we're going to take um, all of the comments. I believe um, Jen said we have until mid-January, is that right? Maybe beginning of January. Um, so if, if you have any friends who um, missed this meeting or uh, you think would benefit from um, taking the survey, um, it would sure be a benefit to us. So please... Um, you know, pass the, the email, sorry, the website that we're about to share with you to, to anyone who might be interested. We're going to take and record all of that, the survey responses and create three conceptual master plans, three landscape design plans. Um, and next meeting in February of 2022, we'll let you vote on your favorite option. Um, at that time, you'll also be able to comment um, similar to today. Um, and then following in April, um, in spring, We'll have one plan that will um, take in all of the comments up to date and kind of coalesce into the preferred master plan. And again, you'll have a third time to, to comment. And that again is in April of, of next year. Next slide. So to close, um, um, here is the information in the survey and more information about this park can always be found at the city website srcity.org slash park projects. Um, and then for questions, um, you can email Jen, um, Jen Santos, who's the deputy director of parks. And this is her email and phone number. Um, and with that, I would just like to, again, lend our sincere appreciation and I'll pass it over to Jen for closing. Thanks so much, Nicole, really appreciate. And I also agree, really great questions, great feedback. We really appreciate your time tonight, especially during the holidays. It's gotta be really hard to listen to a long uh, community you know, meeting about Fremont, but it's so important and we're so happy you're here with us. And um, like Nicole said, this is definitely not the only time you can provide your input. If any of your um, friends, neighbors, et cetera, Anybody from the Santa Rosa Middle School would like to participate. We have an online survey. It's exactly the same as the one you took tonight, but it does allow for more open-ended responses if you'd like to do that. And that'll be open. We'll keep an eye on it until either the first or second week in January, um, as soon as we've got, got a lot, quite a bit of responses from that. And um, again, just wanted to thank you all. Really appreciate it. And you had uh, my phone number or you can always call Recreation and Parks. We'll, they'll connect you to me if you have any additional follow-up questions or would like any further clarification. And uh, thanks again for attending and we'll see you in February. Thanks and have a good night.